Do you wish you had a miter saw for your steel cuts? Well, Evolution may have the answer. This is the Evolution Power Tools S355, and it's a 14 inch blade cold cut saw, but it also offers the ability to miter up to 46 degrees to the left or to the right. Now let's dig in and take a closer look at this, and then after we use it, we'll come back and talk about pricing, about warranty, and what we think of it. This is the Evolution S355, and it's their 14 inch metal cutting mitering chop saw with TCT blade. So uh, basically you get a miter saw that's glorified and able to uh, cut large pieces of steel. Now it comes in this format where it's disassembled, but really when you break it down, most of these are clamps. So putting this together is, is very quick and simple. Other than putting the blade on, basically we're gonna put this on the rails, uh, put the back cap on it, and I think that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started doing that. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is take this miter and turn it, just press the thumb button here and turn it to zero or 90 so that now our rails are straight back. And then you'll see here on the head, we've got this button here, which is kind of a slide button. This slides open and uh, allows you to slide this on the rails. It's got this little stopper in there. We're gonna leave that so that now we can uh, actually use that to put that on and that pin's not gonna be locking in place. Very simple, line up the holes, and then we can slide this out, and it's gonna lock into one of those three holes there. We'll put that in the front spot, and this is basically a locking mechanism. But once, it's, once the pin is in, then you can cinch that into place and really lock it into place, and it's not going anywhere. Now, if you'll see this pin here, we need to pull this back, and that same pin, once I pull this head down, is going to lock this down as well. So you can see with the pin in, it hits right here. If I slide that back and pull that down and then slide that over and that's going to lock that head down. And we'll go ahead and grab the Allen key or Allen wrench that's right here on board the saw. Grab our cap here, slide that on. And now this adds is not only a stop for this not coming all the way back, but it also adds as anti-tipping as well. So now when there's a load all the way here on the back and you raise the head up, it's sitting back here on these feet and not flipping over. Now these two thumb screws here with springs on them, I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna go right here in this lower hole and over here as well. And that's so we can add different clamps and guide bars. So these upper ones are little detent ball bearings inside of there, they're spring loaded and they lock onto these different grooves. And based on the height you want, you can set those and then lock them down with these thumb screws and now it's locked into place. And then if you want it back out, loosen those, pull it out and you're good to go. And so once you have this rail on, then you can utilize these clamps. Slide over and you can quickly adjust them, flip this over, and now you can crank that down to tighten it up. And then this one here will sit in this corner or right here here, here, or here. So several different places where you can actually set the clamp to actually hold the piece down. Quick adjustment here. Same thing here, I can push this button, raise this up or down, or use the threads, push it in again, raise it up, move it out of the way. You also get a quick, quick adjustment knob back here to raise and lower. Really cool system. And in addition to the flat feet for clamping, we can take these and easily slide them on. And you see the detents right there, so it holds them on. 
and now if we're cutting some type of angle iron or even a square turned up at an angle we can use these for holding them down or even round tubing so whether you're putting them on here we get three of these so we can put them on all three of the clamps And here we have multiple areas to actually set this clamp. And if you want to put set screws in there, you can to actually lock that into place. If it's something where you're making repetitive cuts, put that down, put a set screw in there and hold it in place. And installing a blade is easy. Again, using the onboard Allen key or Allen wrench. Loosen the window here and take both this washer and bolt as well as that larger washer off. And make sure that this arrow and this arrow are facing in the same direction. And it is right hand thread. Well, it is a full 15 amp saw, so it's basically gonna take all the power you can give it through a 120 volt or through your standard 15 amp 120 volt outlet. Uh, it's turning a 14 inch blade at 1450 RPM. And by the way, you never wanna use a cold cut metal blade saw on anything spinning faster than the rated RPM. You don't want teeth flying off, that's a bad thing. And it does run a one inch arbor as well. Now on the table surface, you will notice uh, the different holes here. So you can actually use any of your typical bench dogs in there for helping aid in, uh, in clamping down material or uh, just putting material in and holding it in place. And these are gonna be a standard, I believe they're three quarter inch. Yeah, three quarter inch or 19 millimeter bench dogs. Now the table surface size here, the overall width is right at 27 inches of a machine surface. So the overall length of the machine itself, about 27 and a half inches, just a little less. And height of this machine is going to go right at 18 and a half inches. From the front of the saw to the back of the saw, you're looking at a little more than 28 inches to the front of this lock down here. Now on the miter side, as long as you don't have it locked down with the thumb screw here, you can basically lock it into each one of these notches and you can just press this button down here, slide this over and it will lock into each one of the notches. You have an indicator right here and it shows you all the way over in the last notch is 45 degrees, but you can push the detent down, slide it over another degree and get a full 46 degrees left or right miter. And then if you want to put it into a place without a detent, wherever you need it, and then clamp this down, and that's gonna lock the miter into place. So let's get on into cutting, and then we'll talk about cut capacities kind of as we go, and how we're gonna use and utilize these clamps here, which are very cool, by the way. As you see, they just slide on this rail, and until you put pressure on them, they're not locked into place. So it's pretty cool. Once you clamp them down, it's gonna hold its place on this rail. But nice, solid rail, and again, we saw how we can raise this up based on detents, just by loosening these thumb screws and coming up with it to wherever we need it. So cutting things like flat bar, very easy. And again, you can see I can bring both these clamps over, flip this down, screw them down and hold them in place. So cutting things like a quarter inch flat bar that's you know two, four inches wide, not a problem at all. Even if we needed to go into a miter. And you'll see the cool thing is obviously I could come this way. There's really nothing in, impinging on uh, uh, in, or infringing on that turning to making your right hand miter. Uh, but if I wanted to take it left, you see all this mechanism here that looks like it's gonna impede on this, but actually you can see the cutouts here. 
is made to go with that full 45, 46 degree miter and still be able to get a cut in without any of this contraption affecting anything. Now, if you had a full piece of, you know, four or five inch or even two inch trying to stick this up, yes, that's gonna get in the way and we can only make that other right hand swing. But in this case, if I've got it laying down, I can still utilize this and still be able to cut this miter. Now you may have seen that saw kick a little bit and that's because I did not have my miter locked into that 45 degree nor did I have the thumb screw down. So once it clicked into place, then it went ahead and made the cut. But just make sure that you're actually in those detents and you can feel that positive click when it goes in. So now it's locked into place. Now cutting something like a two by four steel, not a problem at all, I can cut that vertical or I can cut it horizontal as well, or laying down um, or standing up. So cutting your standard one by one, two by two, one by two, two by four tubing, uh, really not an issue. And even this, this is a three inch angle. And then one of the really cool things is the ability if we have uh, some square tubing and we want to cut uh, where it's actually standing at a, like a diamond shape or like in this case where we could obviously cut it laying down like this, but I could also cut it this way by just taking these here, these pads, and they slide right here and they have little detents on them, slide into place. And you can see how that holds that into place. And in this case, I've got like four feet hanging off the other end, but it's still holding it in place in that groove. Making nice clean cuts without any sparks and without any hot shrapnel flying around. And even if I wanted to cut this at a 45, which as you can see, you want to make sure that you're not cutting into your holders or I could actually go the other way and clear all of that. But as you can see, we're hitting here on our steel. So we can't actually make that swing to cut that big of an angle. I can cut a 30 degree angle. And look how clean and quick that is. Now this is a five inch by five inch square tube. So you see a full, full five, actually like five and an eighth, that five by five and an eighth, but still five inch square tubing. Raise up our center of gravity there. Now, if we'll look at our max cut capacity, it actually says a max of four and three quarter inches as far as height and about six and a half inches from front to back. So max of four and three quarter inches tall. Well, this exceeds that, but you'll see here in just a second, we can still make a cut on this. Now, when I start, once I get into my cut, I'll have to help this a little bit, but that's about it. So we'll see. So you can see that's about the max that I'm gonna get. And I'm cutting almost to the bottom here in the center or, or actually cutting some on the bottom. So I've cut almost all the way through, but we can flip this. So now we've got it flipped, I should be able to make my last cut. So 
So I could dress that up with a grinder. I could throw it back up there and make that last cut. But you can see with just one turn, we can actually cut five by five steel. And they also claim that at a 45 degree angle, uh, your max square tube is like three and three quarters of an inch as far as height and width. And they recommend a max thickness of a half inch. I uh, believe this is probably three eighths. Yeah, that's three eighths thickness. Now the S355 from Evolution Power Tools is not going to be the answer for everyone because it's not a cheap tool. This is gonna to run you somewhere around the $850 range. Now you're gonna get a three year warranty with that as well. Now let me tell you where we think this fits well. With those common smaller sizes like one by one, two by two, two by four, uh, even into the larger stuff like four by four square tubing. Now we showed that we could cut the five by five inch square tubing, but if you're cutting a lot of that, you're not going to want to you know, keep flipping it over to make those cuts. But your more common smaller sizes with your typical fab shops, this is going to be a great tool for that because it's gonna speed up that ability to make those miters, those repetitive cuts over and over without having to do any type of you know, setup or extensive setup because Evolution even has some, some great cheaper saws, but when you actually wanna change the angle, either you're actually turning the saw or you're getting a, an Allen wrench or something like that, and you know, changing the fence setup and fence orientation, and then you may only have one way to cut it. So the ability to quickly change from one side to the other uh, as far as making your miter cuts, the ability to uh, change the angle of the actual uh, piece of stock that's in there, whether you're cutting it you know, at a square with a flat surface or turning that square up at an angle with your point and, and quickly throwing on uh, these little adapters for the actual hold down bar and for the clamps that are on here. Really love that. Also love the fact that you have the ability to run bench dogs in here as well. Again, for that repetitive stuff that once you set up, you can quickly make those cuts, make those repetitive cuts on that normal stock that you're used to without having to go into any type of major setup or having to you know, make a lot of marks and things like that. So great tool, cuts really, really well. If you haven't used a cold cut saw yet, it's really the way to go. Uh, throwing sparks across the shop continually and building up tons of heat, just not a fun process at all. And the cold cut saw, typically works a lot quicker. Hey, check it out from Evolution Power Tools. We'll have a link in the description. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.